Good morning and a very warm welcome. You are watching Janata Television and this is the English Bulletin with me, Anustha Acharya. The top stories first. The Kenyanite Task Force to investigate fraud in the local elections. Task Force is led by Vishnu Prashad Paudel. Finance Ministry informs that CCTV footage is lost. CPN Yamal demands resignation of Finance Minister. A new Omicron variant PA5 has been confirmed in Nepal. Number of infected is increasing every day. Gone man kills several people in shopping mall in Denmark. Police arrest a 22-year-old Janice as a suspect. And Nepal announces 30-member squad for U20 SAF Championship. Nepal faces Maldives in its opening match. And now the news in detail. CPNUML has formed a task force to investigate the fraud in the local elections. A meeting of the UML Central Secretariat held on Sunday formed a three-member task force led by Vice Chairman Vishnu Prashad Podel to investigate the indiscipline, anarchy and sabotage during the local elections. The other members of the task force will be the head of the Central Election Department and the head of the Central Organization Department, said Prithvi Subbagurung, head of the Campaign Department. UML has also decided to conduct ideological and political training in all the seven provinces. The responsibility of coordinating the training has been given to the seven vice presidents of the party. The meeting has also nominated secretaries in various departments. The meeting has also formed the Department of Physical Infrastructures and Transport Management Department of Forest and Environment Department of Finance and Planning. The meeting has also decided to mobilize the people against inflation, price rise, policy corruption and lack of manure by passing the working procedure of the research academy. Minister for Communications and Information Technology Gyanendra Bahadur Karki has instructed the Advertising Board to implement the Code of Conduct on Advertising, Production, Distribution, Publishing and Broadcasting within a week. Announcing the Code of Conduct at a program organized by an advertising board in Kathmandu on Sunday, Minister Karki decided to implement it within a week. He also clarified that the Code of Conduct issued to make the advertising sector healthy and dignified cannot be called historic and important unless it is effectively implemented. Minister Karki expressed confidence that the Code of Conduct, issued after much discussion with the stakeholders, would benefit the society by ending the unhealthy competition, distortion and inconsistencies seen in the advertising sector. He also expressed his commitment with that his ministry would immediately remove any obstruction in the implementation of the Code of Conduct. आचार संहिता ने अहिले विज्ञापन क्षेत्र में देखिए को अस्वस्थ प्रतिस्पर्धा, विसंगति र विकृति हरलाई अंत कर दे इसलिए यो क्षेत्र लाई मात्र हुई ना समाज लाई पनी लाभान्वित करने सके बने देखी यो ऐतिहासिक होने सकता सा वही ना बने देखी हमें ले सब दारु मात्रे खर्चेर मात्रे इसको प्रभाव कारिता होने सकते ना रमला विश्वास सा यो प्रभावकारी होने सा र ऐतिहासिक पनी होने सा बन्दी मायले आसान लिए कुछ मिनिस्टर कार्की आल्सो पॉइंटेड आउट द नीड टू प्रमोट फ्रीडम एंड डिसिप्लिन एट द सेम टाइम टू मेक द कंट्री सिविलाइज्ड एंड ब्यूटीफुल सुन Speaking on the occasion, President of the Federation of Nepali Journalists, Bipul Pokhrel, said that the Code of Conduct was issued to address the disciplines in the advertisement market and urged the advertising board to focus on its implementation. The Ministry of Finance has stated that the CCTV footage of the night of May 29, the day before the budget was prepared, was deleted. The ministry on Sunday responded to a demand for releasing CCTV footage of the day fearing that the tax, ra tax rate was manipulated by unauthorized person entering the ministry at midnight on May 29 while preparing the budget, a report.
Finance Minister Janardhan Sharma has been accused of changing the tax rate by admitting unauthorized person inside the Ministry of Finance at midnight on May 29 while preparing the budget for the fiscal year 2022 and 23. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Finance sent a letter to Consumer Interest Protection Forum, Nepal's Jay Prasad Powdell, on Sunday seeking information in this regard. In the letter, the Ministry claimed that the footage would remain in the archives for a maximum of 13 days and then be automatically deleted. The main opposition CPNUML, which has demanded the resignation of Finance Minister Janardhan Sarma in Parliament, has repeatedly demanded the release of CCTV footage. Finance Minister Janardhan Sarma has been clarifying that he had not done anything with wrong intentions. Despite the UML's demand, he has been saying that it was not necessary to show the CCTV footage to the UML. This budget is not necessary to be able to do it. It is not necessary to be able to do it. It is not necessary to be able to do it. It is not necessary to be able to do it. I am not 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 able to do it. Jai Prasad Powdell of Consumer Interest Protection Forum Nepal had filed a petition on June 28 demanding CCTV footage from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. of the day prior to the day of budget presentation. Some industry elites are expressing some strong dissatisfaction with the current tax rates in the budget. This is Sanatha Bulletin. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back. After the break, we continue with other national news. The national active COVID-19 caseload of Nepal active caseload has reached to 333 on Sunday as 33 people tested positive for the infection in past 24 hours. The latest reported numbers of infections carried the nationwide tally to 979,801, while the death toll remains at 11,952 as no fatalities were recorded yesterday. Meanwhile, the total coronavirus recoveries stands at 967,516 with 20 discharges lost yesterday. As per the latest data provided by the Health Ministry, a total of 2,120 tests were conducted in the last 24 hours of which 1,162 were PCR tests while 958 were antigen tests. Similarly, antigen tests confirmed 14 positive cases in the past 24 hours. Nepal's COVID-19 recovery case stands at 98.7%, while the fatality rate stands at 1.2%. Currently, there are no individuals in any quarantine facilities across the country. A new suspect case of Omicron variant BA5 has been confirmed in Nepal. A genetic test at Dhulikhel Hospital has found a suspect case of Omicron BA5, according to the hospital, samples from other laboratories showed us suspects of Omicron when viewed through the gene sequencing. Coronavirus infection rates are rising again in some parts of the world due to two new suspects of the Omicron variant. The BA4 and BA5, which originated in South Africa, are spreading to more countries in Europe and United States and the United States. According to the Sukras Tropical and Communicable Diseases Hospital Omicron suspects, BA5 was found to spread faster than other variants. Physicians have been told to be cautious, although the BA5 is not known to put human at risk. According to experts, Omicron of BA4 and BA5 has also been seen in people infected with other variants of Omicron. The number of infected people has increased recently due to the declining number of the vaccination. And now the news from Economic Front. A total of 237,813 foreign tourists visited Nepal in the last six months. According to the statistics shared by Nepal Tourism Board, a total of 46,900 tourists came in Nepal via a routine in the month of June alone. 
It is a 69.3% recovery in comparison to arrival of foreign tourists in June 2019. In May this year, 53,608 tourists entered Nepal, the board said, adding last April recorded arrival of over 50,000 tourists. Similarly, over 42,000 tourists arrived in Nepal in March, while February saw arrival of around 20,000 foreign visitors. Similarly, arrival of 17,000 tourists was recorded in January this year. The influx of foreign tourists has been improving since the beginning of this year. Tourism sector was one of the hardest hit sector in Nepal by COVID-19 pandemic. The sector remained affected by the pandemic for over two years, 2020 and 2021, and is still yet to fully recover. Among the foreign tourists arriving in Nepal this year, Indian national stands atop the list followed by Americans. Time for a short break here at Janata Bulletin. Stay tuned for international news. Welcome back. Now the international news. Danish police say that several people have been killed and injured in a shooting at a shopping mall in Denmark's capital Copenhagen as reported by Al Jazeera. Police inspector Soren Thomassen said that the suspected gunman who is in custody is a 22-year-old Danish man who was detained near the field's shopping mall. Inspector further added that there are several injured and the motive of terrorism cannot be ruled out. He said the police had launched a massive search operation throughout the local New Zealand region to determine whether the suspect had accomplices. Police said that they were first alerted to the shooting at 5.36 p.m. local time. Local media published images showing heavily armed police officers at the scene as well as people running out of the mall. Witnesses quoted by Danish media said they saw more than 100 people rush towards the mall's exit when the first shots were heard. Russia has claimed its forces have taken full control of Luhansk province in eastern Ukraine after capturing the final Ukrainian holdout of Lichansk. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Sogu informed President Vladimir Putin that Luhansk had been liberated, the Defense Ministry said on Sunday using a term Ukrainians have dismissed as war propaganda. Russia earlier said its forces had captured villages around the encircle the city. Ukraine's military has also confirmed that its forces had withdrawn in his nightly videos addressed Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky acknowledged the withdrawal but said the fight for the city was still raising on its outskirts. He added that Ukraine does not give any back and pledged to retake the city with more modern weapons, citing his forces' success in recapturing other territory as reported by Al Jazeera. You are watching Janata Bulletin and now the latest from the world of sports. Nepal's U20 football coach Megras Kesi has selected 30 players in the second phase of selections for the upcoming SAF Under-20 Championship and the AFC Under-20 Asian Cup qualifiers. Kesi certainly listed the team from among 41 players selected in the first phase. A total of 11 players did not make it to the second round after about a month of training. The Under-20 SAF Championship will be held in India from July 25 to August 3. Nepal will face the Maldives in its opening match on July 25, followed by a match against Sri Lanka on July 27. Nepal will then take on India on July 31st and Bangladesh on August 2. The squad includes Iswar Gurung, Yunes Chaudhary, Saurav Karki, Jirat Sekh, Akiv Haq, Amar Shrestha, Sonit Dahal, Ayo Shrestha, Azay Chaudhary, Sumit Shrestha, Aswin Bhatrai, Shrizan Dani, Rosan Thapa, Raj Thokar, Abhishek Vaiba, Dipesh Kurung, Asis Rai, Chitis Bhandari, Sandeep Karki, Chana Mazaya Dhami, Mohit Gurung, Kritis Ratna Chunsu, Pritam Sangtan, Suman Suwal, Manangya Nakarmi, Ayush Khalan, Dipesh Rai, Niranjan Malla, Rohan Khargi and Rohit Subba. We are at the end of Shanata Bulletin and the headlines once again. CPN EML forms a task force to investigate fraud in local election. Task force is led by Vishnu Prashad Powder. 
Finance Ministry informs that CCTV footage is lost. CPM Yamal demands resignation of Finance Minister. A new Omicron variant BA5 has been confirmed in Nepal. Number of infected is increasing every day. Gunman kills several people in shopping mall in Denmark. Police arrest 22-year-old Danis as a suspect. And Nepal announces 30 member squad for U20 SAF Championship. Nepal faces Maldives in its opening match. And that's all from the English News Desk for today. You can follow Janata Television and our programs on various social media platforms, including on our website, janatasamacha.com. Keep watching Janata Television. Namaste.